Okay, okay, that's going to be good. Okay, so people seem to be really convinced that we should pass these around. So I guess we'll pass them around and we'll see. Um, okay. People seem to wish to proceed with business uh, while this is going on. So we will do that. Uh, the next business is the Worldcon Monitor's Guide and Portal Committee Report. Uh, oh, by the way, the people who are, are uh, who wish, who wish to volunteer for the Nitpicking and Vice Picking Committee should contact me uh, after the session. Mike Wilmoth, Chairman of the Worldcon Runner's Guide Editorial Committee. Uh, we made some more incremental changes to the Worldcon Runner's Guide online, uh, mostly involving the bidding process, which didn't exist on the guide before. Um, so we're making slow progress, but gradual improvements. Anybody who wishes to participate, please contact me and I'll get you involved. Any questions? Thank you. Business on page 18. The new eligibility for the rest of the world committee. Um, I'm the interim chair of the committee, uh, the originally appointed chair. Uh, for various reasons was, was unable to continue to act as chair and appointed me to continue as chair. Um, we have two motions here, both of which can be passed by this meeting. I hope will be passed by this meeting and then with luck will then go away. Uh, the reason they will go away is that there is a constitutional amendment that covers making these motions unnecessary and if passed, and since the last year's Hero Committee recommended that they be passed, uh, this year's also hopes that they will be passed. Uh, if they're passed, then these temporary motions get to go away permanently and you get to stop having to listen to the hero people come up every year and introduce the same two motions. Uh, but we do have to introduce them in case the constitutional amendment is not passed. Uh, the first is to continue hero in existence with a proviso at the end that says if the constitutional amendment is passed, ignore this. So, I believe that the first motion is now on the Sure. The first motion uh, on page 18, short title, we, we Might Need Another Hero, is currently on the floor. Uh, is there any debate on this motion? Seeing none, those in favor say aye. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it unanimously, and the really hero committee is continued for a year. And the second motion is the usual extension resolution that says that uh, non-U.S. publication followed by U.S. publication gets to trigger an extra year of eligibility. Uh, and we can do that on a one year at a time basis. And this would be the one year at a time. Uh, so this is the second motion on page 18, short title, This Year is Model. Is there any debate on this motion? Yeah. So if, if the committee goes away, Ben, does this point three point three point two? does that, that continue every year or yes. does that go away too? There is a constitutional amendment pending that, if passed, makes this extension permanent. Uh, and it was passed for the first time last year, and if it is ratified this year, then this extension becomes a permanent extension. Any debate? Yes?
it is an unlikely situation. But should the Hugo, well, should the constitutional amendment be amended down to automatically extend only some of the eligible items, then this year's model, well, then the motion that for this year that extends all of them would not be moved. So, and do you wish any action? So, I move to amend by removing the provided that paragraph. In the second motion only, since it either has no effect or it extends eligibility. Okay, is there a second to that amendment? Second. Is there any objection to it? Hearing none, the advisor goes away. Is that the motion? Sure. Question? Yes? The numbering here is 323 and 324. However, the proposed amendment is 34. It, sh it should be 34. So, I'm confused. <laughs> um, a, a, a technical note. Um, last year, the business meeting direct, sorry, last year the business meeting authorized the secretary to renumber sections, uh, and all of the extension resolutions were moved into one section, since that was a strict renumbering, uh, that the business meet that it wasn't the constitutional amendment, didn't have to be ratified or anything like that. And we had to adjust all of the motions to keep pointing at the right new numbering sections. We missed one. Okay. Any other questions for the debate? Seeing none, any objection to passing this motion? Hearing none? Motion is passed. I move to reconsider uh, the question of 3.2.3.1 in light of what Seth pointed out uh, regarding uh, the previous, uh, uh, regarding the possibility of uh, the amendment passing the changes. And how did we pass that? Did we pass that by unanimous consent? Okay. Is there a second for the motion to reconsider? Hearing none, the motion fails. We're all going to Robert's exercise today. And that concludes the report of the Hero Committee. With luck forever. <laughs>
uh, not for lack of interest, there were lots of people who uh, came up during the year and said they wanted to be included, and I've got a list of names of folks who have asked to join in. Uh, so the committee asked to be uh, continued another year with somebody else in charge so that the failure does not repeat. Any questions? Oh, come on. <laughs> The, the, the question is how many people under 18 have, have requested to be on the committee. And that's not data that I necessarily have. My sense from what I know of the people is almost nobody. Um, if, but, you know, nope, I, I don't think any chairman of the committee would, would exclude anyone with interest. Question? Sure. Again, I, I don't know everybody's ages, but I think that's not more than a handful. Uh, I, I, there's at least two or three, possibly as many as five. Anything else? Uh, next item is the... Oh, right. Yeah, so with a little lot. Call out here, Jackie. There's a, a motion to uh, continue the committee with the new chair. Uh, is there any objection to that? Hearing none, the committee is uh, continued with the new chair. Uh, I, I'll get to figure that out, and uh, it'll be announced before the conclusion of the Sunday business meeting. Um, next item 3.3.2 the Christmas Membership Types and Rates Committee. satisfy that concern. We uh, therefore move to uh, the, the constitutional amendment at the, uh, on to page 20, uh, WISPAS membership types and rates. Move to amend the WISPAS constitution by inserting a new section between 157 and 158. No World, no world Con Committee shall sell a membership, which includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2.1 for site selection for that world time. And on behalf of the committee, and in the absence of any objection, I so move that uh, adoption of that motion. Parliamentary inquiry? Yeah. Um, what is complicated by 4.2.1? Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> I mean, it's I it's site it's selection. Like how the site selection, vote, site selection voting fee is determined. Mm -hmm. Got it? Um, No, this is the, the supporting fee by which the, um, the selection of, of the seat of the committee so th th this is, is intended to restrict all kind committees and it's restricting the sale of memberships uh, that include any VISPAS voting rights and the restriction is based on the, su the uh, supporting membership fee that was involved in the selection of that roll con. So by the time they are a roll con, 
the site selection fee that was the selection the sporting membership fee that was used in their election was long ago determined. Ah, that was not what I interpreted that as somewhere that needs to be clarified. It is intended that the vote when it says for that Worldcon, we mean the Worldcon that whose membership costs we're talking about, not the election that they're administering. Well, then please clarify as saying. Well, would there be anybody to say it's been been for that world con, say for the selling world con? For that world con. Oh, yeah, but how would we say the change to say for the selling world con? That, way, that clearly refers back to the sale in the previous name. Okay. Is there any objection to that change? Okay. Somebody can propose an amendment if they want. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't think the interpretation the chair has uh, announced is correct and it would be in the legislative history in the minutes that it was intended to be that Worldcon so that there is guidance to future interpretation on this. Okay. Yeah. Would this allow the Worldcon Committee to give an initiative to no cost? Would not settle? Yes. Okay. Would you permit a Worldcon to give away a membership? So it's not a sale. Um, on behalf of the committee, I object to this decision. It would, the committee's intention is you could sell something for zero, and therefore, uh, I, if, if that is the chair's ruling, I feel the ruling of the chair. The chair has a suggestion. The chair suggests that there be a committee to report tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Second. So, so moved. No, no. Well, this is a suggestion for a wording change. If there's a lot of suggestions for a lot of wording changes, I think the best procedure would be to refer to committee to report back tomorrow. I second the chair's suggestion. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any objection to so referring? Hearing none, this motion is referred to a committee to report back to the business meeting tomorrow. Uh, one of the things that came up during the meeting, during the committee discussions was, as the, the, the report said, there were lots and lots of ideas tossed out that didn't come close to having majority support, but clearly deserved to be discussed. I moved that the committee be established and direct, regardless of what happens on this motion, that a similar committee be established to report back next year with, after further discussion and hopefully further uh, resolution. I, I believe there is discussion that should take place in this meeting. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Um, Quick recording. Yes. If we already established that the phase report next year has to be done in more days. We established that if there is a constitutional uh, amendment that uh, it cannot be referred by the, the preliminary business meeting to a committee except the report to the preliminary business meeting. This is not any specific constitutional amendment. This is just a general proposal that this effectively this committee be continued, possibly with new membership and new officers, to continue to consider this issue. Uh, and it's been moved and seconded to uh, create uh, a continuation of this committee in that manner. Uh, yeah. um, I'd love to move to add a, a bit of an ability to look at so it's suggested to add the ability to look into the price of printed and electronic communications and how that factors into membership rate issues. Is there a second to that? Hearing none, fails. Okay. Uh, you, you can't. It's already. You can't object to consideration for an amendment. Only an okay. initial main motion. Call the question. The uh, secretary needs a moment to catch up.
speech against. I believe uh, that this latest amendment uh, is over-specifying the rules of the committee and is, I think they know that's one of the issues to address and they are, and anybody who's going to be dealing with it already knows this. So we don't need to over-specify what their role is and what they have to consider. Uh, speech in favor of the amendment? I think I would agree with the last speaker, but the reason I put it forward is when you look at the price of the supporting membership, which I think a lot of people would like to bring down, the key issue is how you, is whether you can supply just electronic publications at a different rate. Um, so I, th I think people out, outside this, uh, this meeting need to know that's an issue that's being addressed. Speech against the amendment. I believe that the point of a supporting membership is not what you get out of it as an individual. Uh, whether you get a publication of print or a publication of email, it is to support the convention. Right? You're making a donation. And so I, I believe that the cost of whatever benefits you get out of a supporting membership are actually irrelevant. Um, the price is fixed at a, at a level that will help to support the convention. Not that you will not be attending, presumably. Speech in favor. Andrew Adams. Um, the issue, though, of the cost to the World Cup of what a supporting member gets, which is somewhat specified in the Constitution, is an issue that needs considering when we look at that. You can't set get any support to the uh, convention if the cost of the supporting membership is below what it costs the um, convention to administer your membership and, and send out things. So um, I think it's clear that this is one of the substantive issues and I think it's an important enough one that uh, making it clear that it's involved in, in this committee's deliberations um, is relevant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's context since I was the original chair of the committee last time, and assuming its remit is extended on the same basis. Firstly, the remit inherited from two motions submitted last year that I think would have included this in a fairly broad scope. Secondly, we have passed a motion which will presumably ratify tomorrow to remove specific provisions about opt in, opt out of publications. Um, you know, saying it's really for the individual committees to work out their pricing structure. And I can certainly say that whilst as Mark said, there were many different views within the committee. I think there would be unanimity that we're not going down the route of over-prescribing what cost structures should be. So for all those reasons, I don't believe we need specific direction here. The committee may or may not wish to look at it, but I don't believe we need to, to get into it. And I certainly don't believe, believe we can start substantive debate on it here. We're only discussing whether the committee should be directed. I think the specification is harmless but unnecessary. Uh, for example, I can't imagine the committees would be reconstituted without Martin involved, and consequently we can be sure this is going to be considered. I believe anybody who has a strong feeling on this ought to consider volunteering to be on the committee. Uh, this sort of committee works best when all the points of view are represented and uh, we can hash something out. So, I, I, I think this is a good thing. I think we should go ahead and pass it to defeat it. It won't make any real difference in the <coughs> talk, I suspect. Question, please. Yeah. What are we voting on? We could be debating now. Is, 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 no, is it for to send this question to the no. committee to report tomorrow or for confirming the whole committee? This is to add the, explicitly to the committee charter the issue of the cost of print and electronic publications. So it's just an amendment to the motion to refer to uh, add this issue. This is the difference. There's, there's the specific motion that came up as being referred to a, to be referred to a different committee we will report back tomorrow. This is the general motion to, to continue a general committee to next year to consider these issues. And what we're on the floor right now is an amendment to the charter of that general committee that will report back next year to, to specifically mention 
of the cost of electronic communications and how those affect uh, membership rates. Did we actually vote on sending it asking a committee? No, we haven't voted on the motion. We're we'll going to a committee, committee to report next year yet. We're still perfecting that motion. Yeah. This is um, with the Easterbrook Amendment, uh, the committee can consider prices, supporting membership costs, printed publications, etc. Without the amendment, the committee can consider prices, costs, supporting membership, <laughs> everything else. I see no reason to clutter up the motion with extra things that do not make the slightest bit of difference, and I prefer to keep things as simple as we can. Speech in favor. First, a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. A parliamentary inquiry, is the, has the motion 3.2.2.1 been referred to a committee to report back tomorrow? Yep. Mr. Chairman, parliamentary inquiry, is there a motion on the floor with a pending amendment attached to it to continue the previously instituted committee and possibly amend its charge? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, Thank you. It's not quite clear it's a continuation of the committee or a committee but, of the same purpose. But that committee has nothing to do with the amendment that's been passed on to deal with for uh, tomorrow's meeting. Right. I, I ask this because I keep hearing people who, with question marks floating over their head. Mr. Chairman, I move the previous question to debate on all pending motions at this time. Is there a second? Second! All those still wishing to speak to any of the pending motions, please raise your hand. Thank you. There appear to be none, so we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, and we will vote first on the amendment to uh, expand the charter by adding the provision concerning the cost of electronic and printed publications. Those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hands. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you, the nays have it. So I'm back to the motion on creating a uh, continuation of this committee uh, to consider the issues of membership rates uh, and classes. And all those in favor of the motion to create the committee, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Ayes have it, so the committee is agreed unanimously. So the committee uh, is continued. And uh, as with many of the other committees, uh, I'll be appointing the members of chair and so forth so people should uh, indicate their desire of serving to me. Uh, well, the, the appointments of the committees will be announced before the end of the business meeting Sunday. So, oh, yeah, but, you know, but the earlier that we tell them, the better. <coughs> so, it's 12.15, we have another 45 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure we really want to run all the way till, till 1, but we're now to uh, World Cup. Yes? Earlier, another motion to, to the forward discussion of this proposal to the the motion uh, printed on the agenda, in the agenda on page 20, was referred to a committee to report back tomorrow. Uh, have I yet uh, Yes, we do need to set time for it. I set eight minutes. Uh, any other values? This constitutional amendment for the reporting back tomorrow. What? It doesn't matter, it's renewed every day. So if you give it should, you know, we have eight minutes tomorrow, and if it should be postponed or somehow fall forward till Sunday, we have another eight minutes and so on, or whatever the value is. Four. Four. Other value? Okay. Those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hands. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. It's eight minutes. Roll call reports.
pensions that have not disclosed that they are surplus in accordance with the rules. Um, they are required to report. So the next first is the manning full time. Um, and board is on page 21. Um, is there any uh, way you wish to speak on behalf of the board at all? Uh, any questions concerning this report? I have a question concerning the report. Uh, yeah. Is there anyone with any knowledge as to who serves in the governing body of the corporation that ran the Millennium Bill Fund? Is there anyone in the room who can answer that question? Joni Dash, I'm particularly looking at you. So are we. I, we haven't had. Uh, the person who could answer it best is somewhere between here and here. I, I actually don't need a best answer. I need any answer as to who serves on the board of this corporation. I do not serve on the board, therefore I do not recall at this time who does serve on the board. And the person who could answer that question is somewhere between here and here. Okay, uh, I suggest that we could, you could ask this question time. again. I, 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 uh, I, I asked whether a motion, hmm. I, I asked for assistance from the chair. Sure. Uh, if the answer that we get tomorrow when um, the, the person is in, currently coming from Heathrow uh, otherwise is not satisfactory to a member of this body, is there is there some appropriate way for this body at that time to urge or instruct the corporation to appoint um, other people to the board and perhaps even designate who those people are so that the legal issues can finally be resolved? Uh, we could certainly, if we choose to do so, pass a motion urging the Millfall Corporation or almost any other corporation to do almost anything or refrain from doing something. But our ability to actually direct them is um, yeah, infinitesimal, I would say. So I can't quite say it through. Uh, it, it, does this body have any authority to seek uh, equitable action in the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania against the nonprofit corporation? Chairman, uh, 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 in, in principle, yes. Uh, no, uh, find who could appoint. Well, it is a slight problem that we're an unincorporated association. So, you know, it gets pretty murky. And I was kind of asking for a legal opinion, and I'm not a lawyer and you are. So. <laughs> I would think we could, uh, we could uh, you know, create a, a, a committee of enforcement to, to go out and bring an equitable action for some group which fails to follow our rules, but we can argue convincingly that they agreed to follow our rules, but that might not be a wise thing to do. I, I, uh, finally, my last question, I apologize to me for delaying already on you. Um, would it be in order tomorrow to appoint a committee to explore the legal options that this, this as an unincorporated association has to see if we can break this election. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Having had to deal with Pennsylvania law, you're better off dropping dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may before that was all. I think the best thing to do is to move on to the next report. Six, seven years before you get it. So it's not a practical idea. Okay, next item of business is 4.1.2, LA Con 4 report. Okay. I'm simply the only speaking member present. I didn't prepare the report. Elaine, oh, oh, and also, right. Uh, um, uh, Elaine Club for this report. I would like to explain an apparent discrepancy in this. Um, earlier we said that Skippy is uh, now completed this benefit fandom obligation due to um, the MPC donation. And then at the end of this, there's a small positive balance. And this is simply a timing thing. The, the report was prepared before that donation occurred, so it, it, it is now uh, complete, but not as a final report. Um, I can try to answer other questions, but it really is what it is. Yes. Yes, you know in the report next year that you're finally spent the money for Presumably. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. I'm willing to yield. 
Mr. Chairman, inasmuch as the timing of the closure of this report was a few days before the final donation, uh, I would move that the business meeting, one, thank Skiffy for their donations in excess of LA Con for surplus for uh, various causes, including the health of the Wisconsin Market Protection Committee, and two, that the business meeting declare uh, LA Con for's Wisconsin reporting requirements fulfilled. I ask unanimous consent for this passage of this motion. Okay. Uh, is there an objection? Seeing none. Uh, so we need to make sure the secretary has the wording properly. On behalf of Skippy, we thank the meeting. Yes, we, we still have $58,824.33 left. Well, I thought you said you include the we, we do not mention the money we gave to the Market Protection Committee because this report was prepared before that money was given to the I think the question is, I think the question is, do you have an estimate as of this instant how much money is left after these other grants? Is well, it, for example, is it zero? $5,000 less than the minimum. $5,000, yeah. Less. Okay. Um, can you remind me? 1400 So, so well, there are approximately $50,000 left, roughly, more or less. Any other questions? Thank you. Which is currently being transferred back to us as, as SCI. 
um, to close cooperation archive the website. Whilst technically we would be happy required by meeting to come back next year to report that we had indeed transferred $2,600 to SFCI, I was well in the good grace of the meeting is saying we've met our obligations and declared us the final report. The meeting is willing. Any objection? Thank you very much.
this report. So, you know, there, there's still a few expenses that we don't know for sure what they're going to be. Ben? Uh, I would like to note that roughly 50, there's roughly $65,000 of additional expenses that we be taking off the 185000 That is correct. Uh, which basically means that it's really about $120,000 left, and $320,000 grants will cover the $50,000. We because basically what has basically what this report doesn't include is none of the membership reimbursements were done yet. And there's a well, actually, actually about half of them had been done at the time of this report. And at this time, all of them that we're aware of have been paid. But when we made this report that hadn't happened yet. Okay. Who, who was first? Warren? Uh, I believe that this uh, final line on page 32 is showing, including the two pass along funds first that's already made, uh, the total surplus would then be 152000 Right. So half of that would be about 75000 Well, the way, the way she lined this out was we based our original pass along fund figuring on the 152000 Now, those first two 20000 have been done. The third one hasn't yet. Um, we, if, if our expenses aren't, if our remaining expenses aren't as high as what we're anticipating in this report, then there will be additional pass along funds to all three. Even if, they Even if there is. Yeah. If your report is correct, it should be 25000 to each. If the expenses are lower, it should be higher than that. Correct. Correct. We actually, we actually figured it would be more like 23000 each, but that number is, is we, we, we hope to have this settled by next year's report. I'd love to say we'll have this all distributed by next year, but we'll see. Okay, Colin. I think the key point, and I remember saying this at a business meeting two years ago, is to emphasize to all seniors in the world is that their immediate successor that is the one to worry about most, the one that can do with the funds. And personally, when I chaired that, when I advised, I'd say it is better to overpay a few thousand or a few hundred to the immediate successor that's take the conservative line and then maybe go to your success. Then I'm sorry, you couldn't give me another five, ten thousand dollars and now it's too late to get the benefit. I think that is a shame for any convention that leaves the successes in that position and it has happened a number of times in the last decade and I would really like to see us stop doing that. Okay. Not real sure what I can say to respond to that at this point. Any other questions? Any other comments or questions? No. Yes. Uh, this is not just you, but for anybody who can get a financial report, which includes. Um, Can't hear you. Mike. Mike. Sorry, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark. It's not just for Lone Star Fund, but for anybody giving a report that includes money from sponsors. Is a list of those sponsors available? Yes. <laughs> That's a very good question. We haven't considered where to make this available. But obviously, we didn't give the the full breakdown on all of this, but uh, as far as sponsors is concerned, we can provide a list, and uh, uh, I, I need to talk to Randy a little bit about where we would provide this. We'll, we'll probably put it up on the website. Once we, you know, once we get a little closer, we just, we just got the final figures here in the last month. Any other questions? Dave? Okay. Just a point. Unless I'm missing something, the largest portion of that is probably the pass along from the three prior world cups. Yes, that's correct. Anyone else? Thank you.